Hello everyone, I'm Kyle from the Gwinnett County Public Library, and welcome to Virtual Black History Month Artist Series. This week I will be highlighting the musical artistry of country singer and guitarist Charlie Pride by showing you how to construct your own two-string rubber band guitar using items from around your home. Let's get started. Begin by gathering your supplies. You'll need a shoebox, a pair of scissors, an X-Acto knife or utility knife, a small Phillips head screwdriver, something round to trace a hole, a sharpie to do the tracing, and two rubber bands. If you're using a shoe box, place the round object on top of the box, trace around it, and use the scissors to cut out the hole. I'm making it easy on myself by using a vinyl glove box, which already has the hole pre-cut. A tissue box will also work. Using your X-Acto knife, poke two holes on each end of the larger hole. And again on this side, one and two. Use the small Phillips head screwdriver to further the holes. One, two, three, and four. Now it's time to decorate your box. You will need sandpaper and some kind of paint. I'm using black spray paint because black's my favorite color, but you can use any kind of paint you want. Now take the sandpaper and scrape along the inside of the hole just to smooth out those edges a little bit. And keep going until it's nice and smooth. After that, you want to take your sandpaper and rub it along the outside of the entire box. Edges, sides, and all. The reason for this is you want to have a surface where the paint will stick and it will stick better to a rough surface. This will also make your box appear more like wood. And just keep going until you've done every single side. You'll notice that the writing and the decals are starting to come off. That's what you want. And we're done. Now, while I take this outside and paint it, I'm going to tell you about the awesomeness that is Charlie Pride. Born on March 18, 1934 in Sledge, Mississippi, Charlie Frank Pride initially had dreams of becoming a baseball player. In 1952, he was a pitcher for the Memphis Red Sox as part of the Negro American League. In 1953, he signed with the Boise Yankees, a Class C farm team of the New York Yankees. However, due to an injury, he was sent to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin to join their Class D team. He also played for the Louisville Clippers and the Birmingham Black Barons while in the league. 
In 1956, he was drafted into the United States Army and began basic training at Fort Carson, Colorado. While there, he joined their baseball team and won the All-Army Sports Championship. After being discharged in 1958, Charlie returned to the Memphis Red Sox, but his previous injury severely hindered his pitching arm. While working construction in Helena, Montana, he was recruited to pitch for the East Helena Smelterites, where Charlie's guitar and singing abilities came to the attention of the team's manager, who paid him $10 to perform before each game. During this time, he played nightclubs and released demo tapes, which were heard by Chet Atkins, a producer at RCA Victor. After signing a contract, he released his first single, The Snakes Crawl at Night, in 1966. His second single, Before I Met You, was released soon after, but neither song charted. However, Charlie's third release in 1967, Just Between You and Me, reached number 9 on the U.S. country charts. Over the next 14 years, Charlie charted an impressive 29 number 1 singles on the U.S. country charts, including his signature tune, Kiss an Angel Good Morning, in 1971. That same year, he was nominated for Entertainer of the Year at the Academy of Country Music Awards. Presented by fellow country singer Loretta Lynn, she was told not to hug Charlie on stage if he won. At the time, a white woman hugging a black man was still seen as taboo. He won, she ignored the Country Music Association's warning. Charlie continued releasing music throughout the 80s and 90s and was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in 2000. Sadly, Charlie died in Dallas, Texas on December 12, 2020 at the age of 86 due to COVID-19 related complications. However, his contributions to country music, a predominantly white genre of music, cannot be understated. For more information on Charlie Pride and other important African American artists, visit our databases at gwinnettpl.org forward slash digital dash resources forward slash. Welcome back. The box is all painted and dried. Now it's time to apply the rubber bands. Take the scissors and cut each rubber band in half. One, two. Now use the small Phillips head screwdriver to feed the rubber bands through the four holes. and then tie off the rubber bands. Before attaching the rubber bands to the other side of the box, make sure you pull one of the rubber bands tighter than the other one. The thickness of the rubber band changes the tone of the sound you hear when you pluck it. The thinner strings on your rubber band guitar vibrate more quickly, and we perceive these vibrations as a higher pitched sound. Finish up by making sure all the knots are secure. Now that your basic rubber band guitar is finished, 
it's time to make it look like a guitar. However you want to do this is up to you. I'm using spray adhesive and some leftover cardboard scraps to cover the knots of the rubber bands. I also use the scraps to make a neck. And a head. If any of you older teens are skilled at woodworking, have access to the supplies, or any old guitar strings laying around, you can use these same principles to build your own fully functional cigar box guitar on which this program is based. I hope you enjoyed this week's spotlight on country musician and guitarist Charlie Pride. Join us next week, February 21st, when Trisha highlights the artwork of illustrator Sabrina Khadija. Until next time, bye.